What's up everybody? My name is Gene Villanos and this is a special Performance Max full walkthrough setup campaign and it's just going to be me today just like how Ryan was the one who created the search campaign setup that is on our YouTube channel and if you haven't watched that yet I definitely would encourage you to watch that before this Performance Max set up walkthrough because search is basically the basis of your performance max and you're gonna need a really good profitable optimized search campaign before you see really good traffic and conversions on performance max but again it's just me for today and we're going to dive into this and there's going to be a lot of visuals so if you are listening on spotify or apple podcasts i suggest you jump on to our video podcasts on youtube and check it out there we always do mondays on How's it going, everybody? It's Gene Villanos here from the PPC Cave. Today, we're doing a special episode where we're going to do a full setup walkthrough on Performance Max. And just like how Ryan created one that's also on our YouTube channel for search, I suggest if you haven't watched that yet and you're new to Google Ads to go ahead and take a peek on our YouTube channel on the video podcast forum just because it's going to be really beneficial to see what's going on on screen as opposed to just listening on Spotify and Apple podcast but note that we do release all our podcasts and video podcasts every Monday so without further ado I'll go ahead and jump into this performance max setup walkthrough with full screen cap first you want to go ahead and click new campaign and we're using ryan's old demo account so if there are some things that are a bit wonky that don't work out because it is an inactive account forgive me but i'll do my very best to make sure that i'm comprehensive with all the advice for a setup with performance max campaign i usually click sales whenever they ask what your campaign objective is. Some people do create campaign without a goal guidance, but it really just depends on your niche. I'm the e-commerce Google ads specialist, I guess. I don't like using the word specialist, but I do primarily Google ads for only e-commerce. It's been my niche for so long and it's kind of how I do things. And I always make sure that I click sales. So you can see this conversion action is inactive because this is an inactive Google Ads account. But don't worry about that. Just make sure that your conversion goals are pulled in. Purchases for e-commerce is very important. Make sure that you do have your conversion settings set up before you do this. And you only have one primary action, which is purchases and nothing else like add to carts or begin take checkouts are going to be you know your primary action you can make those secondary but just go ahead and click purchases and then continue and here it'll show you what type of what type of campaign you can run you know search performance max display shopping all these other ones we're doing a performance max walkthrough today so go ahead and click performance max and i doubt that the merchant center is working but i'll just go ahead and put that in there go ahead and click the merchant center that you are going to be using for the products because your products will be linked to your google merchant center which is in return linked to your shopify which in previous episodes is the middleman between a performance max and a shopping or product listing ad campaign i usually just name it simply gv i do gv p max or performance max i know there are some people out there that hate saying the shortened version of p max but it's just too long to say performance max so i'll go with p max and then go ahead and click continue and then this is the most debated topic, I guess, for the PPC Cave co-host, me and Ryan Fenton. He swears by conversion, but I am of the school of thought that if you are in e-commerce, your goal is to get the highest 
uh, average order value for each transaction, aka you want to make sure that conversion value is checked here for your bidding strategy. You don't want to put a cap for return on ad spend just yet because you don't have enough conversion volume. But once you have about 20 to 30 conversions per month, I like to you know, take a look and test it out. Sometimes you might have 20 or 30 conversions in a month. And then the next month, if you cap the target return on ad spend, it just stays at that point. But for me, I like multiple months, maybe two or three months to see a particular, I guess, ROAS to be set. Sometimes without having that return on ad spend, I guess, limit you could really see the conversion value increase from month to month. So don't shoot yourself in the foot by getting too greedy too quickly with setting a return on ad spend. Make sure that you let adequate time, i.e. two to three months go by with the same bidding strategy here, like conversion value. Then you could start to gauge what the return on ad spend should be at that point. So yeah, I go with conversion value. Just because I'm in e-commerce and I want the most conversion value, not just conversions. I want to sell things that are, you know, high margin, you know, conversions work well. If you have a particular product catalog that's either small or maybe they're all like $10. But if you have multiple types of products, pretty large catalog you want to use something like conversion value that pulls in those sales with the highest conversion value customer acquisition i don't really touch this but i understand that if you have a strategy behind it you know you want to make sure that you you know maybe click this if you just want optimize to optimize just for new customers this customer acquisition really depends if you have a strategy or maybe you're running a performance max campaign that has this and then another one that doesn't have it it just really depends but i would say for my clients 90 percent of the time i don't touch this i don't make i don't check off optimized campaign for acquiring new customers i don't really do that but before moving on i just looked at my notes and I totally forgot to mention this. Um, you know, I want to give a definition of what Google Ad Sets Performance Max campaign, the Performance Max campaign is and how it's basically just defined. So this is from Google.com themselves. Performance Max is a new goal-based campaign that allows performance advertisers to access all of their Google Ads inventory from a single campaign. It's designed to complement your keyword-based search campaigns to help you find more converting customers across all of Google's channels like YouTube, Display, Search, Discover, Gmail, and Maps. And I know I should have probably started with this, but it's never too late to go back, I guess. So, um, you know, looking at this particular definition, you really want to understand the nature of Performance Max. And this is basically what it is. It's being able to use performance, aka Performance Max, as the goal, as we said earlier, it's sales. And there's not really any other signals other than that and other than your current search campaign that's running. So I've kind of said it before in another episode, if you don't have your search campaign set up, or even if you have your search campaign set up and you're not getting the traction that you really want, you know, it's going to be really, really tough for someone to run a performance max campaign and find success, success through that performance max campaign. For me, it's really important to one, have that search campaign set up, firing and adequate conversion volume, and also to go into a performance max campaign cold, meaning this is your first, I guess, campaign that you're going to run. It's going to be really an uphill battle. I've seen it where I have a, a client that has a beautiful website, they're competitive in price, they're, you know, they're credible, their speed of service and product delivery is fast. All of those things are checked out. 
and it works well. You know, it could work well immediately, but I would not use this Performance Max campaign if you hadn't seen that type of qualified traffic and conversion volume. I would use this as maybe if you're just beginning as your remarketing campaign, but also run a manual shopping and of course, you know, your search ads alongside a performance max campaign. And then you could start feeding it signals once it gets conversions from your other manual campaigns, like what I mentioned earlier, your search and your shopping. I don't really see a lot of arbitrage or you know third party sellers or drop shippers that are new to the Google Ads uh, platform do well with just a performance mass campaign having an increased budget on that and not going the other route of finding qualified traffic through manual uh, like a manual shopping campaign and a manual search campaign so i just want to make sure that you know that with performance mass campaign one run a profitable or optimized search campaign with good conversion or adequate conversion volume and also shopping alongside it and then run performance max as kind of the layer of remarketing and using utilizing the data that you're pulling in and the traffic that you're pulling in through the ai so just wanted to throw that out there all right so now for this page you see that the bidding strategies on conversion value customer acquisition it's fine we just bid by default don't worry about optimizing campaign for acquiring new customers so we don't have to check that box just click next and you'll see here this is the united kingdom so it's not um the us but i do live in the us but for this particular campaign if you're targeting the united kingdom kingdom make sure you click united kingdom and i will go back to this portion later because there is a weird thing that google does in this setup phase that there's no option to do it until we publish the campaign or go back to it later once it's created. So that is a bit weird, but don't worry about it. We'll go back to that because uh, we're not done with this location settings just yet. But for now, click United Kingdom or wherever you sell your product at. Languages, if the United Kingdom speaks English or you know whatever language it is, just make sure that you check that out. Uh, put English on there this automatically created assets this is if you're familiar with google search this is basically a dynamic search ad where it's taking your text assets along with your landing page domain and your ads and kind of mixing up a combination uh based off relevance and through google's ai that creates specific assets or in this case in this case text assets and final URL. So what that means is it'll make a little bit more sense later once we get to that portion. But if you have all this checked off, like text assets and final URL, I don't see it really doing anything dangerous to your account per se, but just know it's really diving into the, like I said before, the AI portion of performance max where it's taken a lot of the information through searches and conversions and your website and google merchant center and doing its thing without us really knowing it but most of the time if we're feeding this particular asset or this particular campaign this performance max campaign uh information and signals like this then it tends to do better so i usually keep this checked uh, text assets and final url but it you know, if you don't want to do that and you only want to have the final URL you input into your asset group, then it's not going to be the end of the world. So add scheduling as you open this little gearbox. When you click more settings, you could run your schedule. If you have a schedule, I just let it run all day. But I think there are some clients out there or some people out there that only sell a particular moment of time or um, particular day or period of time in the 24 hours that we have. So if you have that, put that in there. Um, start at end dates. Sometimes I see this with clients where they'll have an end date. Don't ever put an end date because then you're just making a bunch of camp new campaigns with start at end dates. You don't have to touch this. Campaign URL options. This is if you have any tracking or parameters that you want to um, 
look at like custom parameters. Uh, I don't really do anything with that. But this last one right here, brand exclusion. I think we talked about this uh, beforehand in our last Performance Max episode. This is important. This is important because a lot of the time you are, you know, uh, showing up on searches that don't have a search term report or an insight report where you could see exactly who's searching because it's performance max. So you have to understand that there are going to be competitors that you want to put into this little list. I, for one, if you're in e-commerce, would put Amazon.com on here or just Amazon and, you know, maybe eBay or other platforms. The biggest thing is being aware of what your product is and what your website is and if you might see other campaigns such as your shopping or your search campaign if you look at their auction insight and see the overlap of other companies or websites that are showing up on the same product as you maybe you want to go ahead and include those in your brand exclusions you know a lot of the times there are clients that ask me well, can I put my own brand on there? Or, you know, what about the particular products that we sell? You know, that, like if I, we always have this example, but if we have Adidas, Adidas, James Harden, basketball shoes, why don't we, you know, put in the word, I guess, Adidas, you know, as a brand exclusion, you know, um, because if you're, the website adidas then you should already be capturing that search engine optimization and be high up and basically own that whole real state of that search query with anything adidas in it but this is totally up to you you know some clients want to just show up for those generic long tail keywords and not have the brand search terms in there you know they 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 see that if we include a brand search term you know, that, that means this is not a new customer and I don't want to be doing Google ads for new customers. I want to do Google ads for people that are searching in generic terms that have never purchased or even seen my website before. So if you were to exclude brands in theory, you would only receive search terms or search queries from people that are searching from a general perspective, such as Adidas or such as, sorry, not Adidas, but such as basketball shoes or men's basketball shoes, as opposed to Adidas, James Harden, basketball shoes. But it's really up to you. There's, this is a whole other episode and, you know, you could get into it where um, you want to defend your, your brand or your website name and not exclude it because you want to show up on that that goes not only for performance backs but say you're running a shopping campaign and you keep seeing your website xyz website basketball shoes you keep seeing that and some people would say like i said before take that make that a negative keyword i don't want anything i don't want a part of that they've already been to our website before they know our brand name so why would we advertise on our own brand name but it really depends if you look into your search reports and see your search impression share is lost on a search campaign or on a search term for shopping manual shopping and it's your brand term and you see that there's a high search impression share loss due to budget because of that and then maybe a competitor if you were to do a regular native search for that particular search term or your website and you see competitors on there well you have to defend your particular brand or else you're gonna get searches where they're searching for your name and going to in this example, instead of going to Adidas, they're going to Nike or Puma. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis, and I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. But it's really important to understand your brand exclusions. If you want to exclude your brand or your website or, you know, just have generic search terms in. But for the most part, I like to exclude for sure your competitors or any, uh, I guess, similar in the industry type of competitors that you have in this branding exclusion list. And so, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. As I'm looking at it right now, we could just go ahead and click next here. All right. Okay. So for here, 
if you're listening on on Spotify and Apple Podcast, this is pretty new. I think this is this was just released in 2024 or late 2023 where in Performance Max there's an asset generation that is created through Google AI and you could input your final URL or you know if you are I guess lazy you could just click generate assets um, but for me I don't really do this I just like to do it manually because some of the times it'll say that you're you might be selling a particular product you know in reality and if you generate assets it'll start selling saying that you're selling pretty similar product but not the exact product but i think google ads optimization creation and setup is really important to know that you have a particular service and product that needs to be framed in a unique manner and you can't frame in a unique manner in e-commerce if you have no idea what you sell. So for you to use the AI Google asset generation tool that's in beta for Pmax, it's not the end of the world, but reconsider yourself as a PPC manager if you have to do this. Maybe jump into the website that you're advertising for on google ads more and learn the product itself so that you won't be reliant on something like this but it's not a bad tool to kind of just start things off and then edit it and of course you know optimize it so but for me i don't really use it so i'll just click skip and this is where we get to actually creating an asset group and people ask all the time how do you create a your first performance max campaign, how does that, how is that kind of structured? For me, I like going into the back end of the, the ads account itself. If there's any shopping or search, or if there was a previous performance max campaign that has garnered some conversion or tracking, I would look and see, you know, I would take a look and see and start to build a little bit of a bestseller list so if that's 5, 10, 15 products in both the last, you know, 60, 90 and year to date, those are kind of the lenses that I look at, you know, because looking just at 30 or 60 is a bit too granular and small. 90 is good, you know, half a year, but year to date is kind of like you you understand the full picture. So you could stencil a bestsellers list through those particular time parameters. And I would start with a bestseller. That's just me, um, you know, and if you don't have any Google ads information on what is a good converter at, for a product, then go into the Shopify itself or go into the back end if it be Wix, WooCommerce, whatever it may be, and just export a little bit of the analysis year to date and, toggle through and see which items have the most sales, you know, net sales, gross sales, you know, just look, look at that and then start from there. But for me, I would create this asset group name as best sellers because Google ads is best used if you are accentuating the positive. Next, you want to click listing groups. Don't do all products because that is not your best sellers. You want to make sure you look at the selection of products and I usually go by item ID. You could type in your item ID like Adidas James Harden. Again, there won't be any products that are pulled in for this because this merchant center is no longer active. But you know, it's really easy to visualize. Just make sure that you have the products on one side and then you can copy and paste all the item IDs of the 15 to 20 best sellers. And if there's less, that's fine also. And then click save. Um, going down here, you could see the final URL. I'm just going to do my name um, just because I don't want to get, I don't want any weird weirdness here. But like I said, this is an inactive account. So I'll just do genevillanos.com. That's my name and say shoes or whatever. Uh, genevillanos.com shoes. You want to only sell 
or only have the final URL going to the genevillanos.com shoes. So now you are by default creating a shoes themed asset group for Performance Max. And if you continue on here and go down, the headlines, you could see there's a maximum of 15 for the headlines. And I think this is really important to state. We want to be able to create 15 headlines if possible. And this means you inputting any call to action, any promotions, offers, features, benefits, unique selling points, you know, just being inform informative like your shipping time or how to initiate a refund, what that looks like. If you have a lifetime warranty, 90 day, whatever, put input that as long as you're being Google ads partner. Oh, that's weird. Um, as, as long, as long as you're being different and creating different headlines that are not redundant, but if you are creating headlines for the sake of just reaching 15 and say one of your headlines is shipping is free. And then the next headline is free, sh well, free shipping. That doesn't make a difference. That it's the same thing. You don't want to do that. You want to create headlines, of course, max out if you can at 15, but make them headlines that are unique and uniquely themed and don't create headlines just to create them to get to 15. If you can only do five or six solid headlines that encompass your website and your unique offering, then do that. You don't have to do 15. So qual quality is better than quantity. For long headlines, uh, you have five. And for this, I do really like to um, max it out. And again, don't be redundant. Create a particular long headline that will show anyone that's reading it exactly what they're clicking on. And sometimes it's not going all the way up to the 90 characters. Sometimes it's as simple. So if it's genevillanos.com and I sell, how about this? I sell basketball shoes. Then one long headline that I'll have would be here at Gene Villanos. That's my brand name. We sell basketball shoes for all ages, free shipping included. Something like that. You know, I would create something simple and, you know, I'm not maxing, maxing out 90 characters if I don't need it. If I could effectively communicate in a concise and precise way, I'll do that as opposed to creating, you know, assets or long headlines just to max out the character. You know, you don't have to worry about that. And so here I am looking at this and there are some things that I'm, that I'm, I should probably mention. So for the final URL, going back to that, if you checked off earlier, the final, final URL expansion option, if you remember, then just note that it will be a little bit of a different, um, I guess, uh, path. Because right now, if you didn't check off create text or final URLs in the previous uh, campaign setup, then this genevillanos.com basketball shoes will be the only final URL that will be basically the landing page if it's a search or display ad. You know, as you can see, there's search ads here and display ads with YouTube, Gmail, display and discover. If it's a product listing ad like shopping, obviously that's going to go to that particular product page. But if you had that, clicked where it says, you know, create other new assets and uh, other final URLs that are relevant to the search, basically like a dynamic search ad, then this isn't the only final URL that your ads will go to. So I just wanted to clarify that. And if that doesn't make sense, um, you know, I could probably do a more granular episode on that just that because it is 
I think a bit confusing, but it's pretty straightforward if you've had experience with dynamic search ads. So I just wanted to mention that. Again, here, here's your short description. You just generate, make sure that you're generating things that make sense from an e-commerce perspective. What makes sense from an e-commerce perspective that I would like to see? Well, I would like to definitely see when is my product going to arrive? Well, okay, then that's a good start. So you could put in all orders are to arrive within five to seven business days of purchase. Oh, no. See, sometimes you go over the 60 characters for the short, first short description. So instead of typing all orders, just put orders are to arrive within five to seven business days of purchase. And, you know, that's, that's something that you, as a Google Ads advertiser, really have to work on is the copy. You know, so I, I think there are a lot of different books and a lot of different people in the past that can help you create copy that's a bit more convincing because that is our job as an advertiser is to, as Ryan would say, evoke emotion. So we're looking to evoke emotion through a screen, through text, and what better way to evoke emotion by, you know, hitting the top, the big three, as we would call it in e-commerce, your credibility and reputation. Is your website credible? Do you have blogs or do you have, you know, reviews you could input for a long headline or a short headline, whatever you could put, check out our reviews. Gene Villano's store is an authorized distributor of basketball shoes or a brand, whatever. Um, you know, so what about your pricing? Do you have any leg up on your competitors? Sometimes on here, I like to put for an additional 15% off purchase today with code word basketball. I was going to say something inappropriate, but <laughs> You know, for an additional 15% off purchase today with code word basketball. That's something that for me, if I want to go buy uh, an Adidas basketball shoe, I would rather pay 15% off than something just, you know, just, than not getting a discount. I know there's a statistic out there that's like 87% of people believe that if they're getting a good deal, they're more likely to actually purchase. So, you know, make sure that you're hitting on credibility, reputation, your price, and also speed of service. This one kind of hits on speed of service when it says orders are to arrive within five to seven business days of purchase. You know, that's really important. And of course, on here, you know, for me, do they do, do you want to, make sure that your customers are understanding that from the headline perspective too. You know, how do you build that not only on the long headlines or the short descriptions, but also on the headlines also. So for me, you know, one headline could be authorized re reseller. You know, if you're authorized reseller, that means a lot of things. Usually um, you have some type of warranty or return. So uh, maybe you could put warranty included. I know it's a basketball shoe, but let, let's just let's just step away from the actual specifics and look at it from a like a symbolic uh, lens. That this you know you you could have a warranty that you want to put in there. So warranty included. You could put things like that. But scrolling down here, just making sure that this is pretty much all filled out. And I know this isn't, you know, like I said, this isn't a working account, so it could look a little weird on YouTube. But for images, <laughs> have all these random images, but make sure that you are pulling images that are both landscape and vertical. 
you know, just look, if you click right here and you could see, if you'd click the magnifying glass, you could see, okay, square image, and you could, you could kind of look and, and see for itself, for yourself. And then if like, there are other options here where you could look at the particular types of landscape and ratios, you know, make sure that you have like, all of these specific ratios, not just the one of one, because the one of one is the perfect square, 1080 by 1080 if you're on Instagram. But also do things like landscape, you know, one by nine, 1.91 by one or four by five. What that means is if usually if it's vertical, that's going to go on mobile. And if you primarily have only vertical images, then that makes it really difficult for you to show on desktop because where is the spot for that? You know, so making sure that you have landscape images mixed in with also vertical, you know, one by one square images, you know, really provide a plethora of images and especially in e-commerce. I talked about this in the Performance Max episode, but also have a mixture of lifestyle and product product page photos. Sometimes the default white background product photo only doesn't cut it. And sometimes it's better to have also, excuse me, your lifestyle photos in there. So make sure you fill all this out. And I know not everyone will have 20 images to use, but just do your very best to include as many images as possible. So check that off. And the logos, this will pull from Google Merchant Center, but there is no Merchant Center here. So you, you could just pick whatever logo you have. If you, you know, Obviously, this will be from Merchant Center, but just make sure that you have a good uh, amount of variance for logos too. The more assets that you could provide Google Ads for a Performance Max campaign, the AI is going to love that because it's going to have different options and different combinations to spit out for a particular searcher that might work for one and not for the other. So as many options as possible is really good. Business name, I'm just going to put Gene Villanos. And for videos is another thing that I want to talk about. If you do not put your own link to your YouTube channel or, you know, any YouTube channel, sometimes I for one client, it's not their YouTube channel, but they pay for affiliate marketing. So, you know, they have affiliate links for other advertisers or YouTube channels, and it goes directly to their website. So I use that as well as their, as their own YouTube videos. But if you don't have that, it's going to spit out your headline and your description, and it's going to look like a PowerPoint video. And you don't want that because at this day and age, not having a video for your particular website is you're really shooting yourself in the foot. And I tell clients, you don't have to do something crazy. You could make something on Canva. I can do it for you. I will charge you an extra fee for that. That will be on your invoice, but it's not going to be a crazy ten thousand dollar video mr beast edit it's going to be me just doing a bunch of your products and stringing them and maybe put music whatever i don't know but do something because if you don't it's gonna look like this if you're on the youtube you could see it's gonna this is good gonna be the video it's gonna be like it's gonna be like powerpoint so you don't want that you want to include the videos uh video section as many as you can site links of course you know like right here Wow, this is like all these random ones. Shop our work where <laughs> range all these. You want to make sure that you edit this. And if you have a particular uh, structure, I like to do it if it was basketball shoes or particularly, you know, fashion or apparel, you know, have your uh, basketball shoes or and then have your basketball socks, have your basketball slides, and then make sure that the final URL is correct. And that really expands your real estate as a perform performance max ad also. And for call to action, I don't really mess around. If I'm an e-commerce guy, I do shop now. I don't need Google to test that. That's just one thing, shop now. All right, more asset types. You know, if you have promotions, prices, prices are good too. If you could kind of tear that out for particular categories of what you sell. Um, that's really important because sometimes what you're advertising 
as basketball shoes isn't really what they want. You know, maybe they want basketball slides or a complimentary uh, category that you do sell on your website. So make sure that you have prices in there. Calls, some people have call a phone number, some people don't. Um, you can put that in. Call outs, you know, I like to just make sure that I have all these too, you know. Uh, if it be warranty or if it be hassle-free returns, free delivery or free shipping, fast delivery, you know, make sure that you have all those filled out. This, uh, also with structured snippets, whatever type of brand you have, maybe you don't just have uh, Adidas, maybe you have Nike, Puma, you know, you have all these other basketball shoes. Put that in there and make sure that you're filling out these assets because they really do help in the long in, in the long term not really not really like a big uh move the needle but it's all these small details that once you put them together you create the perfect asset group for performance max you know you can't just attribute it to the headline or attribute it to the long description you know are they all working to create this unified message to the qualified traffic that you are trying to sell this particular product and if it does, then all of it works together because it's one particular theme. But if it doesn't, then you might have to revisit and, you know, test other asset groups and look at different angles and themes for your particular ads. All right. So going through, I always do more options in display path. I'll do like maybe, I don't know, Adidas, basketball or like Adidas shoes, and they're like basketball shoes. Just make sure that your theme is your is is very uh, r prominent and and relevant, you know. And also going down here, so you see the search terms. If you have, you know, ideas of what it is. I mean, this is in beta, but back then, without I've had, you know, asset groups work without this, but it's best to just put as many signals as you can. So you can type in basketball shoes or particular brands, um, Adidas basketball shoe, whatever it may be. Um, and also your data. That's really important. I, I usually just have a lot of, I don't know if it's going to pull in, but you could, you know, include your customer list, any of the things that you export from your Shopify or your e-commerce backend can be uploaded on here and it'll kind of create an audience through that. And I like doing this also, if you have a particular audience or signal, um, you know, make sure that it's not too granular where you're restricting other, I guess, audiences or signals, because if you do, then you're kind of defeating the purpose of what performance max is in general. So just, just keep that in the back of your mind. But like I said, it is good, good and best practice for you to input as many signals and fill all these out as long as you could fill them out without being redundant. All right, here's the budget. Usually the budget, when you click next there, it's going to give you weird budgets, you know, but just whatever is comfortable for you, you know. Um, and then, you know, you click next. I know there's going to be errors, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so going back here, I wanted to brush up on this. This is like the summary where it shows everything that you did with the setup and automatically created assets. If you expand that again, I want to show you something that I usually do, exclude some URLs. So I, I don't mind you know, uh, searchers going to majority of my e-commerce website, if it's genevillanos.com, selling basketball shoes. But if you want to exclude some, some things, like I would sometimes exclude like blog, um, you know, or just type in like blog here. Uh, I would exclude that just because my blog page isn't set up like, crazy call to actions or for e-commerce sometimes it's just informative so sometimes that's why you would use uh the exclusion so i just wanted to put that as a little bit of uh, i guess a uh, little nugget of uh information so yeah 
Um, that's pretty much it. And it's not going to let me publish it because I didn't really fill it out all the way. But one thing that I did want to mention is whenever you are done and you publish it, go back to your settings, go back to your locations, and then you could expand this. It won't expand right now because I haven't published it, but expand this location targeting. And then there would be, uh, I think it's like a more options or advanced option drop down and make sure that it is checked off as locate your location is regularly in instead of interested in. So for this, I only want to target people that are regularly in the United Kingdom and not interested in the United Kingdom. And it defaults to what's recommended is interested in, which is the sneakiest, weirdest thing from Google that will spike your budget for no reason. You'll have people from India or China. And I'm just not saying those countries for the sake of saying them, but they usually, I don't know what it is, will be on your website and you don't even sell to India or China. So make sure that you have that uh, figured out. Once you do publish, go back to settings, go back to locations and check off regularly in instead of interested in. This is a very high overview of the setup of Performance Max campaign, but hopefully you've gained some knowledge of just my process and my insights of how I do things. If you have any questions, let us know at thepppcave at gmail.com. We are going through our series of what campaign types should I run. So once we're done with this series, we could go back to these particular sections that are a little bit more detailed and we could go through a more detailed lens of our insights and processes of why we do things. But in this early stage of our podcast, we want to make sure that we do a high overview of, in this case, what Performance Max is and how to set it up. So if this video has been helpful, make sure you follow us, like, comment, and we always release our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify each week, along with our video podcast version on YouTube. And if there's nothing else, I'll see everyone next time. I won't see y'all, but I'll talk to y'all next time. All right. Bye for now.